In this episode of the Mini Skid Steer Rebuild, we will be answering the question of rollers, rebuild or replace? As I've gone through this Mini Skid Steer Rebuild, I've found that most of the rollers on my Mini Skid Steer need replaced or rebuilt. Now, each individual roller is really not that expensive to replace, but because there are 10 of them, on my mini skid steer, it means that suddenly that can add up to a fairly large expense. So any opportunity to save money on each individual roller could add up to a good total savings. So it begs the question, should you replace or rebuild a roller? Or maybe more importantly, can you rebuild a roller? So before me here, I have four different examples. The one on my right here is a brand new roller. So some of my rollers are going to be replaced. And this is an example of a brand new roller. This is always an option. As long as you can afford the new roller, you can replace it. So some of my rollers are being replaced. But what about the rest? Well, if we look at this one here, this is an example of a roller that could be rebuilt, but I don't think needs to be rebuilt. This is essentially a roller that is not ready for replacement. And the way I did make that determination is just checking to see how much play is present between the outer and inner rollers. In other words, you know, any jiggling between the two pieces. And I really don't detect anything here. If I spin it, it also spins freely. Overall, this, this just feels like a roller that maybe is in the middle of its life somewhere. So that one and rollers like that, I'm just going to leave alone. This is an example of a roller that is totally shot. So uh, the bearings are totally gone. This shaft used to be totally round and now it has kind of a step in it. That's because the, the outer roller was riding against this after the bearings went out. There's enough damage to this that I would not rebuild this. Even if theoretically you might be able to. And then here is the sweet spot of where I would rebuild a roller. So the bearings are still in this, it can still roll, but as I spin it, I can feel that it's, it feels choppy, it feels rough, um, and that's probably a sign of contamination or damage to the ball bearings. It feels rough, and then if you do the same test where you hold, one, you put one hand on the outer roller and one hand on the inner, and you try to wiggle them, there is some play there. So hear that? So there's just a little bit of jiggle to it. This is the type of roller that I would rebuild. Vermeer sells the parts to rebuild these. Even though these are the older style roller, this is the newer style roller. So you can see uh, there's actually a pipe plug right here on the face of this new roller. And that's because these are oil filled. So these older rollers uh, do not have that. They're just two bearings and two seals. But Vermeer again does sell the parts for these. And so I bought one set of bearings and seals to rebuild this roller right here. And depending on how well that goes, there's a couple other rollers that I might rebuild as well. Let's learn together here and see how the rebuild goes. I'm going to use as simple tools as possible uh, to try to accomplish my task. So for rebuilding this roller, I do need to press out the bearings and seals in some way shape or form um, but i'm going to use as simple of a press as possible so this is a poor man's hydraulic press uh, from harbor freight so this will be used to press in and out the bearings especially now when it comes to the seals i may not need this much force so i do have a poor man's seal puller and that is uh, simply a screw. So I'm going to try screwing these screws into the face of the seals and then pulling on the screws to remove the seals. So between these two tools, hopefully I can at least disassemble this old roller. I might need a self-tapping screw. Let me try pulling on it now.
There we go. Huh. Uh, that was not even the full seal. That was just the, the outer cover of the seal. There's still a piece in there. Well, maybe I will have to press the seals out after all. Okay, so removing the seals by simply pulling them uh, was not going well, so I am gonna go back to the hydraulic press and see if I can just press the whole assembly apart, uh, seals, bearings, and all. So I'm gonna use the half-inch bolt to drop into the center bushing of the roller, and I'm gonna press against that half-inch bolt. So the head of it is uh, smaller than the ID of the bearing or the seal, and so that means that um, I should be able to press that through without any interference from the bearing or the seal. Let's just give this a try and see what happens when we press down on that shaft. I have the outer roller resting on the frame, and so I'm gonna to try to press the center bushing down through the roller. Okay, I feel like I'm just about maxing out this this press and no movement as of yet. So this is um, called a six ton bottle jack. So theoretically I am approaching six ton of pressure on that center roller. Okay, I'm gonna get a hammer and tap on that assembly a little bit. This is a pretty robust assembly. My conclusion is that a six ton hydraulic press was not enough to press out the bearings and seals. So let's see if a 50 ton press will do it. If this does not do it, then uh, this part is not practically serviceable. So let's see if 50 ton will do it. Okay, so we broke it free there. So you can press these out. That's a good, good thing. Okay, let's take a look and see how far we've gotten there. So you can see that the seal now is uh, pretty much completely out. Actually, I can just wiggle it right out. So there's the seal. Um, I would say that it had at least somewhat failed its job because you can see looks like there's some some mud that had gotten inside the seal at some point and you can see that the the bearing is a sealed bearing the original one is but um, it's had better days so uh, let's continue pressing this out and see if we can get the whole bearing out since the bushing is now starting to get recessed down in the roller i put a nut on the half inch bolt so that we had something up high to press against. Okay, there it went. So there is the bushing, which you can see is really in pretty good shape, especially compared to the bushings from the rollers that had failed bearings. Um, so there's no obvious damage to this. Uh, sure, it's you know a little bit corroded, but overall um, it's, it's in really good shape. So now I need to press the bearing off of this bushing. So to get this apart, I'm going to slide a piece of pipe over the bushing and then still use our half inch bolt to press against the shaft. There we go. So there's our bushing. The bearing and seal on this side are gonna get pressed out uh, facing downward. Uh, I'm gonna see if maybe this piece of square stock yeah, I think that might actually work to press out the bearing and seal. Okay, there came the seal. And there we go. So there is our old bearing. So if I had to guess, I would say that we probably needed about half of the capacity of this 50 ton press. So maybe, you know, 25 ton or so at the most. Um, so it was just more than that small six ton press could handle. 
The next step is to prepare these for reassembly, which essentially amounts to cleaning them up so that we can have nice, clean, precise surfaces to press our bearing and seals into. I'm gonna do all that cleanup on a grinder with a wire wheel. Well, I wish I had better news, but the reality is is that I've decided not to rebuild this roller. And I have three reasons why. The first is part condition. So when I cleaned up the parts, they, they cleaned up pretty well. And I could see that the roller, the outer body of the roller especially, was in pretty good shape. Um, it had minimal damage, minimal pitting, just a little bit of wear on the outside. Um, but the bushing, the inner piece, um, actually had a fair amount of pitting um, right where the seal would ride. And so if I were to reassemble this with new bearings and seals, it would not last as long as it did originally because the seal essentially could not function properly. It did not have a smooth surface to seal against. So I'm gonna guess that best case scenario, you would only get 75% of the service life the second go around that you did the first go around on the roller because of that pitting that would compromise the seal early. So the second reason really applies more to the other rollers more so than to this one, and that is economics. Knowing what I know not now about the pitting, if I were to rebuild one of these rollers, I would need to do it early. That is, I would need to do it long before it has reached the end of its service life, because at the end of its service life, it has probably uh, experienced pitting like this roller. So if I rebuild it early, that means that I am not getting the full service life out of a given roller. So that takes away from the economic gains of rebuilding it in the first place because you're cutting its service life short. But let's say that we did that. If we re rebuild it at 50% of its effective service life, maybe we could be confident that the parts would be in good enough condition that we could rebuild it without having any sealing issues due to pitting and so forth. Um, but if we rebuild the rollers at 50% of their service life, that means that we are essentially doubling our rebuild cost because even though we are saving, we are also cutting the service life in half. So to put some actual numbers to that, uh, a new roller from Vermeer costs me right here, right now, $170, which I do not think is terrible. That's not outlandish. Um, the parts from Vermeer to rebuild this were about $85 or so. So that is right about half, right, of the cost of a new roller. So for me, if I save half of the cost of a new roller, but I also cut the service life in half, I now have a break even, and I would rather not go through the work of rebuilding a roller uh, if I am not having any financial gains from that. The third reason I'm not rebuilding the rollers is due to design changes. So earlier you saw on the new roller that I have that there's a new plate. There's an additional plate on the outside of the roller um, that essentially protects the seal. And there's a pipe plug there uh, where from the factory they have filled the inner cavity of that roller with oil. So both of those features should extend the life of the roller, which means that not only for $170 am I getting Am I restarting my service life, but I'm actually starting a longer service life. So those new rollers will last longer, I'm confident, than these old ones. And so when you add all that together, it's just it just does not make sense for me to rebuild these rollers as much as I would like to, because this is a lot of steel, a lot of iron to just say throw in recycling. Sometimes the best thing to do is to walk away from a DIY project and I am gonna walk away from these roller rebuilds. That being said, there is a silver lining here. So now that I understand the way that these fail, um, I did reassess the rest of my rollers and I actually decided that the rest of my rollers are still within their useful service life. What seems to happen on all of these is that one end of the roller will start to go first. And that is even true in the pitting that I see on this bushing. One end has much more pitting than the other end. And so knowing that, I went back and checked all of the rollers and I could actually tell that the bearings were essentially healthier on one side of the roller than the other side. I'm just going to run them 
until uh, essentially both ends start to degrade, which is closer to where this one was before I disassembled it. Um, and then at that time, I'll just replace them with new rollers. If you do the math a little differently and decide you do want to rebuild your rollers, I highly suggest you make a couple of spacers to help you press in your new bearings and seals. So essentially, you'll want to make a couple of donuts that are two inch OD, one inch ID, and about three quarters of an inch thick. And what you'll do then is you will essentially use those on the top and bottom of your roller and press in the bearings and press in the seals, um, all with that bushing inside. So that would make the job a lot easier and you wouldn't have to fumble around with a bunch of odds and ends trying to get those um, seals and bearings in place. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something along with me. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave a comment down below. Um, otherwise, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.